We're now going to take a look at how to work with some of these panels within Dreamweaver, how to customize the panels, and also how to open and close them, and the most important, how to locate them once again if you accidentally close them. So we'll take a look at all of that. So I am in Dreamweaver Creative Cloud. I have all of the pages and files closed within the program. And what you're looking at is the default view when you first install it. Now, one of the things that they've tried to do with the Creative Cloud version of Dreamweaver is streamline things a bit within the program. Prior to this time, what they would do is tend to add features, but never really remove that much. So they've wanted to streamline it to make it easier for you to locate things. So let's take a look at these panels on the right hand side. That's one of the first things that have been changed a little bit. Now you can see things are grayed out throughout the panels, both at the bottom and the side. So what I'm going to do is click create new HTML. This button right here in the welcome screen is going to open up a new page and now my panels have all been activated. So you can see I have content in the properties as well as the right hand side. Now let's take a look at how to open and close panels and if you completely close them where to find them once again. By default the insert tab is located on the right hand side. Now this insert tab has moved around a little bit throughout the various versions of the program. I tend to find people new to the program do find it a little bit easier to work with this insert bar up across the top right above the web page itself. So one of the first things I'm going to do is click on this tab, the tab that says insert, and I'm going to click and drag it out. You can see it's very easy to move these around as you wish. Now if I'm holding on to that tab, notice what happens if I move it down towards the bottom you can see how it all gets surrounded by a blue coloring and it's highlighted. If I move it off, that blue goes away and so does the highlight surrounding that content. I can move it up towards the top and it does the same thing, or I can even move it over here to separate it and put it out as its own panel and it's all integrated into the panel structure on the right hand side. So it's possible to move these panels around by clicking the tab and dragging them as you like. You can even click and drag them and move them over to the left hand side here. It's a little bit trickier to get it on the left. What I'm going to do instead is I tend to find this insert bar. Most new users to Dreamweaver like it up across the top. So I'm going to put it directly below the menu items. When I let go, you can see there are these various icons up across the top. And within this area, there are quite a few different tabs. Now the form tab has quite a few icons in it. I'll take a look at those later. But the idea is you select the tab, then you choose the icon within the tab itself. And you'll see these are now gray. They are no longer colored icons. So I can click on the specific tab first for what I want to do, and then I can choose the icon simply by hovering over it. So what I just did was move the insert from a panel on the right hand side into a tabbed structure across the top of the document window, which is this area here that's actually going to be showing my web page. So you can move these around. Now the other thing you can do is open and close them. So right now my files panel is showing and if I click on it once you can see it doesn't do anything. Clicking once opens it. If it's already open it won't do anything. So I'll double click to close it up. Now what I've done is closed up all of these panels at the same time. So if I click once it opens, double click it closes. To switch panels or panes, you simply click on the tab, just like up across in your insert area. Now, if I want to open some additional panels or even close some up, what I can do is go up to the window menu. 
you can see this tells me by the check mark which panels are open. So if I uncheck CSS transitions, you can see it's still open, I just don't see it. In other words, there's no content showing. If I really wanted to close this up, what I do is right click the tab, and if I say close tab group, what it does is it would close both of these tabs at the same time. I'm just going to close up CSS transitions and that closed only that specific tab. Now I'll go back over to Window, and let me open another one. I'll click on Assets. Now this particular one is showing up as a free-floating panel, which is fine, not a problem. I know how to dock it. What I can do is click on the tab, and I tend to put this up next to my Files area, or I can put it in between the two, and you can see the blue area shows you where it is you're putting it. So if I move it here, it's directly underneath my Files panel. Now the Files panel you want to have open at all times for the most part. So I'll double click that and close it up. Here is the Assets panel. So what I'm going to do is click on that tab and drag it up and I'm going to put it within the Files area. So my Files and Assets are located together. So I can customize these panels exactly as I want. The Properties area is identical. I right-click, I can close or close the tab group. Now this just has one tab, so basically both of these would be identical. And I can always go up to Window, and let me close up this Properties. You can see it's now disappeared, and I can reopen it. The insert bar, this one here, is what we just put up across the top. The properties area, you can see, does not have a check mark, and I can open that up very easily that way. So the two important ones, they have listed right up at the very top in the window menu. Makes it quite easy to access those. The rest of these will open and close as we need to, but we basically have the three panels open that I tend to work with on the right-hand side, and we also have the insert bar moved now, and that is this one here, the very first one. What we did was we moved it from the right-hand side, which I tend to find gets a little bit crowded already, and I moved it up across the top. If I wanted to close that, I would just click on it, and you can see it doesn't have a check mark, and it's now disappeared. So you can open and close and move these panels exactly how you like them to be. Now the other thing you can do is up in this right-hand side, you'll see this little double arrow. And what the double arrow does, if you hover over it, it tells you, collapses it to icons. So I can click on that and it's now collapsed and it moves into a little bit smaller space. Notice you can't see what's going on. But when it's smaller like this, I can always click on the icon and it opens up that panel for me a little bit larger. I can click on this arrow, it collapses it back. So these little arrows up in the upper right do allow you to expand and contract the panels as you like. You can also just drag these out as I had done before and move them onto a separate monitor if you have a two or if you're lucky enough to have a three monitor set up, you have a very nice area to work. Just move some of these panels over onto your additional monitor and that way you have a lot more space for your web pages within your single monitor area. But that's how you can start to set up and organize your panels directly within Dreamweaver to customize them just for you. Just notice you do need to have a web page open in order to be able to basically see what you're doing in moving these around. So that is opening and closing and adjusting the panels within the Dreamweaver interface, and I now have them set up the way I like to work with them. The only other thing I'd like to do is under Window, I'm going to reopen that Insert bar up across the top, this area here, and move over to the Common tab. That's the one I tend to use the most. So I've now customized the Dreamweaver interface. At the same time, I've shown you how to open and close panels and organize it just a little bit more efficiently 
so we can get started working in Dreamweaver.